Super Mario Odyssey is the gold standard by which I am going to be judging all modern games by from now until the end of time. This is the best game I have played in goddamn years. Uh, in fact, the last time I played a game was this good. It was probably three years ago, uh, Tearaway on the Vita. Like, it has been that long since I have just felt the magic of playing just a really, really good video game. And, like, everything about this game is just, uh, just an amazing package. It's just an amazing piece of entertainment. And just to go through, like, all the things that make it so damn good is, uh, first off, the controls. Uh, the controls and the gameplay mechanics are fantastic. Uh, you have your basic Mario controls, which apparently Nintendo mastered that shit right out of the gate on the N64. Or at least so I'm told. I've never actually played Mario 64. In fact, this is my first uh, 3D Mario game. So this is my first time venturing into that world. And, you know, really getting a feel for Mario in the 3D space. And it's, it's awesome. Like, he controls great. Uh, and he seems to control this like he has been controlling for, like, the last, I don't know, fucking 20 years. But the big thing worth noting in this game is the addition of Cappy. Cappy is, you know, the, 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 his magical hat that he fucking throws on things. He gets to go inside the thing and take it over. And when I first saw that uh, during the E3 uh, footage, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, this looks like a really dumb gimmicky mechanic. This could be some bullshit. And... I was wrong. Cappy is fucking fantastic. Because uh, one of the things I was really hoping for, I'd seen one little glimmer of hope in the trailer where he's in New Donk City and he uh, tosses his cap onto a, uh, onto a flagpole and he is the flagpole and he's able to like stretch himself down and flick the cap up uh, into the air on top of the building where Mario then exits. And uh, that was a really... I was like, oh, that's a really cool traversal mechanic. And I'm like... This could add in some really great ways to interact with the environments, and that is exactly what it does. I mean, like, Cappy adds so much variety to the gameplay. You can take over uh, some uh, few inanimate objects, you can take over uh, some, uh, well, like, all the enemies and stuff, and it's just a really satisfying feeling to, like, you know, play as all these different things. And, and interact with the environment in different ways. Because the level design in this game is fucking fantastic. The level design is fantastic. And uh, so not only is are, they, are these environments already fun to traverse normally. But then you get to take over different things. Which completely change how you interact with the environment. And it allows you to find hidden things. Or just to progress through certain platforming puzzles. And it is just, it's just so imaginative. It, it really does just take advantage of the gimmick. Like, they came up with this gimmick, and it really, they, they really figured out, like, like, how to get the best out of it. So, you know, right out of the gate, we have fantastic controls, uh, a really cool gimmick that really actually enhances the gameplay, uh, instead of just being some doofy-ass gimmick on top of the traditional gameplay. And, uh... Like I said, like the level design is fantastic. Each each environment, because because the game is split up into kingdoms, and each kingdom feels wholly unique. Like each one has its own aesthetic, but not just an aesthetic, but how you uh, have to like explore through this environment is completely different uh, in each uh, in each kingdom. So so you have like you know like like the kind of like desert environment, and then you have like New Donk City, and then you have. Uh, like 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 uh, friggin' Bowser's castle, and you just you just have all these various kingdoms that you are exploring, and each one adds just so much, uh, just just so much uh, value to the game to where you, you don't feel like oh well now I'm going through the same old thing again. Just there's always a new aesthetic and there's always a new way to interact with the environment, and. You know, then there's also additional ways of interacting with the environment because each friggin' environment has its own enemies in it. So then you end up like taking over new enemies and be able to interact with the environment in different unique ways that you couldn't in other areas. And it's just, it's so much fun. And that's the thing, like, like every part of this game is the fun part of the game. There are so many fucking video games these days where it's just, you know, there's all these slow segments that kind of, 
you know, just kind of drag a game down. And some people will be like, well, it doesn't really matter because, you know, there's all, like there, this part of the game was the good part of the game, so that's all you have to worry about. Well, no, because, like, like, if every part of the game isn't the fun part of the game, then why the fuck is it there? And the answer is just to pad the game out so that way it lasts longer, so that way people feel like they're getting their money's worth. You know, this game was, like, a good, lean, 10-hour experience. Uh, but it was fun the entire way through. And that's the thing, like, that's just, like, 10 hour experience for the main story. Uh, after you get past the main story, there's all these post game things to do. There's things to get unlocked, new kingdoms to go to um, that you couldn't go to before. Uh, there's whole new environments. Like, there's, there's so many platforming challenges. Like you'll, be, like, you'll go to an, to an area and be like, oh, let me explore around here. And then it's like, oh, here's a door. You open the door. Hey, here's a new platforming puzzle for you to do. And you're going to get rewarded with a moon by the end of it if you complete the platforming puzzle. And the, the, the platforming challenges are legitimately challenging. They are harder than the core game. And, but just because they're harder doesn't mean like, oh my god, it's such a difficult bitch. It's like, no, like it's, like, it's a really rewarding feeling once you've conquered uh, like, uh, like the platforming mechanics in this game. And the, just like how you interact with the environments and everything. It's, it's always fun. Like I said... Every part of this game is the fun part of the game. And that is what I sh really want every game to fucking be. Uh, so yeah. Uh, fantastic uh, gameplay mechanics. Uh, fantastic gimmick. Uh, that really uh, enhances the gameplay experience. Uh, great levels. All with a lot of variety. Uh, great fucking level design. Uh, exploring these environments. Always is interesting and cool. And fun to do. Um, uh, oh. The fucking motion controls. They freaking put motion controls in this game. And I am not a big fan of motion controls. I usually hate them. Uh, this is one that really did motion controls well. Because uh, they feel like a natural extension of the normal movements that you would do. Uh, the game always really insists that you play with uh, with the Joy-Cons. So like, you, know, you have your Joy-Cons and you can do the whatever. Uh, I didn't really play with the Joy-Cons. I tried it once. Uh, and I found it kind of unruly. Like, I couldn't... I, I didn't feel like I had a, as tight of a control. Like, I really need to be able to grip a controller on both ends and really get into it. And I played the majority of the game in portable mode, and it was still perfectly functional in portable mode. Um, that being said, uh, there were a few issues where, like, oh, like, I need to, like, do certain motion control things, but also, like, I had my pro controller. And when I had my Pro Controller, that like that was definitely when the game was at its best. Playing it on my Pro Controller. Because all the uh, motion control gimmicks were just fine by flicking the, the Pro Controller. So I'd be playing it and I'd go uh, to like, you know, flip my hat out. i go flip my hat out or flip my hat up or like spin it around a circle. i just kind of and I'd spin it around me. And like it always felt responsive every time I did a motion it always felt like yeah I was I did the thing I was intending to do so the so the motion controls were always great um the game doesn't really demand you rely on the motion controls too much uh there's a few things I kind of wish had button uh iterations of like the like the high jump for the Goombas whenever you're stacked up uh, like, I had an issue with that because I'm sitting there in portable mode trying to get that bitch to flip up. And I'm, like, holding the whole fucking system. I'm like, fucking get up there. Fuck. Mm. And, so, yeah, that was a fucking obnoxious thing to have to try and do. Uh, and then there's also things like, uh, there's, like, a homing attack, which I didn't even know there was a homing attack for the hat. See, so if you, like, if you do, like, the, like, the flick and then flick again, it'll home in. That's, like... Well, I mean, why can't I just hit the, like, the toss hat button and then hit the toss hat button a second time for it to home? So, that was kind of a disappointment. It's like, you know, why can't, like, why are certain abilities that like, easily could have been put into the game, uh, like, button-wise, not in the game button-wise? But, like I said, the, you know, like, if you're not playing it totally in portable mode... Uh, everything works fucking fantastically. Like I said, I only had a handful of issues actually with the portable mode, uh, because of the, because of the motion controls and what it wanted me to do. But, beyond that though, everything works great. Like I said, so once again, great level design. Great, great fucking, uh, like great level design, great 
fucking platforming challenges, great everything. Um, like the boss fights. The boss fights are so fucking good in this game. Uh, they're not too challenging. I did die a couple of times. But, like, usually, like, I would die on the boss trying to figure out its attack pattern. And then by the second go-around, I'd be like, okay, I know what its attack pattern is. And I'd beat the boss on the second go-around. Uh, I th think the old, like, I only had, like, two bosses that really caused me any trouble. And that was, um, the boss in the Ruined Kingdom, which I do not want to spoil that boss because it's fucking cool as shit. Um, and then there's... Um, like the, the the final Bowser fight in the finale, which oh my god, just so much cool shit this game does. Like every time, like you think like, oh man, it'd be really cool if this game did this and it'll do that thing that's really cool at some point, and it's always it's always super satisfying, especially the finale of this game, so fucking cool. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, like everything just feels good. Everything everything feels rewarding. That's the other thing. Like, not only does everything feel fun, but it also feels rewarding. Like, you've accomplished something every time you go through a platform. Every time you find a moon, it's just like, oh, yeah, found another one. You know? Because, you know, they're, they're always hidden in very, in, in, like, you know, places that are well hidden, but also, I mean, some of them are right out in the fucking open. But, like, they're, like, they're usually hidden in, like, like, places that you have to look for. But you, it makes sense. It's like, ah, oh, that's where they would hide that. Like, there are certain areas in the game where I'd be like, I bet, I bet there's some bullshit over there. That looks like there's be some. So I'd go out there and I would like do like a little puzzle thing and like a little platform puzzle thing, and boom, got a moon. And I, it was always easy to tell where, like, it was it was easy to tell where these things were hidden. And also, you know, you know, you can also just pay Toad to be like, bitch, tell me where the hell this moon is. Just tell me. Here, here's my money. Um, but yeah, like the collectibles actually feel rewarding to find. It's not just some random bullshit. You know, the game really hypes itself up every time you get a moon. Because it's just like, do do do, and you get a moon. Um, uh, the, the, the breadth of content in this game is fucking awesome. Because like I said, once you get past the main story mode, then you have all the additional post-game stuff you can do. There's all the old uh, levels you can go through and find all the platforming challenges and all the like the little hidden things that are in each area. And every time you do one of those, it's always, like I said, really rewarding. And you're always, like, like I said, the fun part of the game is exploring an environment and using the, the game's mechanics to do set exploring. So every part of the game is the fun part of the game. Uh, also, you know, like the boss fights are also pretty fucking great too, like I said before. And uh, something that makes the boss fights particularly great is a lot of them, uh, like, there will be things in the environments, like in that level earlier, that will teach you how to, uh, they'll kind of teach you how to fight the boss. Because it's like, oh, like, you'll do a thing, and then later on, like, the boss will have that thing as part of their, like, uh, part of their attack, and you're like, oh, oh, it's like that thing I did earlier in this level, so I just have to, like, jump on this, or take over this, or do whatever, uh, or, like, knock this back, and, like, the, the, the game, the game teaches you how to fight the bosses through its level design, and that is fucking awesome. Uh, the Ruined Kingdom is one of my personal favorites, because it really just teaches you exactly, you do this, and then you do this thing. That's how you beat this boss. And it's such a cool fucking boss. Also the hardest fucking boss I fought. That bitch killed me a lot. Before I fucking was able to beat that motherfucker. Uh, him and Bowser man were, were some tough motherfuckers. But yeah. Uh, uh, oh yeah like I said. Like, like the breadth of content that is in this game is just amazing. And like that's, that's the thing. Like, like you know I don't have to go buy a DLC pack. Like, if I want all these cool costumes for Mario to wear, like, I don't have to buy the Mario 64 skin for, like, five fucking dollars off of the, the, the eShop. No, I just, I pay with it with in-game currency that I can only get by playing the game. Like, and there's two different types of currency, where you have, uh, like, like, the generic coins, and then you have, like, currency that's specific to each level. And there's a limited amount of those, of that currency in the level, and you can get very specific items by finding all these collectibles, uh, all these specific types of money, 
and you can unlock specific costumes for Mario and specific items. So yeah, once again, like, you know, it gives everything in the game some type of value. Nothing in this game feels like it's a complete waste of your time. Uh, at least if you want to unlock everything. You know, like, it always feels like you're getting something in return for all of the shit that you're doing. And yeah, no, this is, that is just this game. It is... It's fantastic. Like, I, this is what I want every fucking game to be. Like, like, not like a 3D platformer, but a game with fantastic controls, really tight mechanics, uh, great level design, uh, just, like, like, every part is the fun part, and one that's just brimming with content. And not that fluff bullshit content where you go and you do, like, the same fucking missions over and over again from different people as you're exploring a big open world environment. Like, I fucking, I fucking hate open world games for the most part because of that bullshit. Because it's just a whole bunch of fluff bullshit for you to do uh, that distracts from the main game. Here, like, all the distractions of the main game, just, it's, it's just as good as the main game. And, again, like I said, always rewarding, always great, brimming with content. Like, you know, no fucking, you know, shady fucking microtransaction bullshit. Um, just... It's a phenomenal game. It's a phenomenal single player game. Single player is practically fucking dead these days. Nobody wants single player games unless it's like a big bajillion hour open world RPG. And I'm like, no, sometimes I want a single player game that lasts me like 6 to 15 hours and is really fucking fun and has like a good story and has like some really great gameplay mechanics. And it's just a unique, interesting experience to fucking have. And that's what this game is. Like, you know, it doesn't hold me back from the good parts. That's another thing. Like, like there's no, like, fluff bullshit. It's, like, that you have to do to get to the good parts. Because it's all the good part. Uh, like, you know, cutscenes are fairly short. You know, it's just, like, just enough cutscene to get a story point across. And then it's just, boom, right back in the And usually the, the cutscene is always something charming and funny or, like, really cool looking. And you're just like, oh, that's really awesome. And then you're just... Back in the game. You're back in the game. After like like a minute a uh, minute to two minutes of cutscene, you're now back into the game. You're awesome doing your Mario thing. Oh my god, guys. This game is so fucking good. Like, when I say this is the goddamn gold standard, I fucking mean it. Like, every game should try to fucking be this shit. So yeah. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey. 10 out of 10. Best fucking game of the year. Uh, fuck Breath of the Wild. It's kind of overrated. <laughs>